Hello, I'm John Lifford, the product specialist for the Relay Panel for Schneider Electric. We'll be going through the demonstration of the Relay Panel demo case for you today. First, you'll receive the case in the Pelican. We'll open up the Pelican case and you'll notice the uh, literature that goes along with the Relay Panel offer. Nice brochure to share with your customer, as well as instruction manuals and a uh, complimentary CD that has a presentation on it, as well as this demo. First, we'll go ahead and plug in the, the demo case by unrolling the power cord and installing that on a 120 plug. There's a few items in this that we'd like to go through first to, to show you for demonstration purposes. We've included a typical photo cell that would not come with your uh, demo case, but you can install that to get the functionality of the photo cell to your customer. We'll walk through this to together. The first is the controller itself. This is a time clock controller. It's SERP. TC411. Next is the relay. We'll go into detail later, but we'll talk about the relays. Next is the, the low voltage switch, which can do for override capability. Let's back up just a second and give you the part number for the demo case. It's an SERP 8 HSDC. You can order that off of uh, your Schneider Electric system. Let's go ahead and go right into some of the uh, uh, integral features of the parts. You'll notice the, the time clock has a LCD screen to give you the time and date, as well as the status of the specific outputs. The relays themselves have the actual status of the loads and also can be overridden with uh, the status indicator. That's one of the feature benefits of this particular relay. Let's go ahead and go into the programming aspects of the controller. This has a 500 event uh, schedule capabilities. Let's go ahead and say program, set event. First thing we'll have you do is go down and make sure the time and date is correct. So when you go through the demonstration, per, uh, demonstration with your customer, you can make sure that the schedule events happen when you program them to happen. So hit your down arrow key to set time and hit enter. You'll notice the date is currently set because of it. It does have a two-year backup capacitor in the controller, so it should should be set. But if not, we can go through here by just pressing the keys here on the keypad. We can make sure that their current date is set. And press enter. Next is the time. Once again, this has already been set, but we'll go through pressing the keypad to enter those numbers. Daylight savings time, check yes or no, press enter. Longitude and latitude, this would be specific to your area if you're going to show the functionality of the astronomical time clock. Right now, we're going to leave it as is. Press enter. Press enter. Time zone, once again, set for your area. Right now we're going to leave it uh, with a negative five. Press enter. We just set the time and date. Now we can go through and set an event. Press enter. You have the options of adding an event, modifying an event, um, editing an event if it's already been programmed. Right now, since it's a fresh demo, there would probably not be a event in here. So we'll just say event add, press enter. The options of once, if you go up and down with the arrow keys, you can select daily, weekly, monthly, and then go back to the beginning. We're going to do a daily event uh, for the customer to show the, the, the priority of the daily event, but you can as easily do a, a one-time event as well. Press enter for daily. This is going to be your daily event, and it says the on characteristics. We can change that by pushing the arrow keys uh, up or down. So you can see that the on changes to off if you push down, and on when you say back up. You're given two options. You have the G, which means group, or O, which means output. Group references the input capability on the controller itself. Currently, we have the low voltage switch wired in. Uh, three wires for two inputs, 
um, to give you the group override capability. So if we push the top button, that would be group one. If we push the bottom button, it would be group two. So we can go ahead and program those groups, or we can go directly to the outputs for this timed event. We're going to go ahead and go directly to the outputs for the timed event. By hitting one, you'll see that the output number one is uh, indicated. That would say your output relay one would turn on for this event. Press enter. Uh, legal time or astronomical time clock would be selected here so by selecting up or down. It says solar time, which is that. We're going to select legal time. Press enter. This is the time that the event will actually occur. So 10:39 is when this particular event would occur. Well, let's go in there and modify that to give us a few minutes to get back out of the program for it to take effect. That's one thing to note when you're doing the demonstration. Give yourself enough time to back out of the program for have that uh, event to happen if you want to show that to your customer. So we get a 1040. Whole time we, we won't uh, really demonstrate this per this feature right now, but it has to do with how long you want that to be held on if you just have one time schedule events. Um, you can have on events or off events, or you can have an on event with hold, which would continue to hold that schedule on for that given time frame. Hit enter. And we come back to the main menu that says set event. Once we've come back to the main menu, we're going to go ahead and press the run button, which takes us out of the programming configuration mode, and now we're into the actual uh, program itself running. As you know, you might not have noticed it, but as soon as we came out, we actually hit that timed event, so we should have given ourselves a little bit more time to see that output one come on. But now you can notice the status of one is highlighted, and you see the relay one is on. So you just programmed an event, and it's pretty straightforward, and it's good to show your customer that, how simplistic it is to, sh to program and program an event, because a lot of people are afraid of the complexities of different relay offers. This one is very simplistic, and, and we try to go that way so that the user could adjust their schedules themselves. Let's go back into program mode to show you how to program a group. Hit program, go down to set IO, hit enter. First option is program group input one. You can toggle down to input two or to the photocell inputs. But right now we're going to focus on programming group one. Press enter. Currently we have a program in here set uh, has output of one, output one, output two, output three, and output four is programmed to group one. We can change those by pressing the inputs numbers again, which will take those off. And so this is how you would probably receive your demo case with no outputs programmed on the, the group. So I'd go ahead and press a few relays to go ahead and cor correspond with that group. I typically do half, so you can see a, a half the panel uh, ratchet when you uh, press the input button. Go ahead and press enter. If you had a larger panel, um, uh, say a 16 or a 32 relay panel, remote, select remote would give the opportunity to select those additional relays on those additional relay cards. Currently we only have an 8 circuit relay panel, so we're only going to do the main outputs. Press enter. This gives you some capabilities of doing optional features on it. We're going to leave it at normal, but there, you do have options of making um, timed on events, timed off events, on only events, off only events, those uh, those kind of uh, events right here. But we're going to go ahead and make that keep that as normal. Like I said, this uh, uh, as well we're going to leave as normal, but that would be your time on extensions, your blink notices, those kind of things. We're back to the main menu. All we need to do now is hit the run button. The run button actually takes the configuration and um, runs that configuration. So over in the corner here we can see the status of our inputs. Uh, input 1 and input 2 as well as the photocell input statuses. Currently input 1 is not highlighted because it is off. We programmed relay 1, 2, 3, and 4 to, to operate off of input 1. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that now. By pressing the input 1 we've uh, effectively turned on 1 through 4 relays. We can see the status of it, the, the group is on. 
as well as those particular outputs are on. We can turn that input off. See the relays go off, the statuses go off. You can do the same thing for group two, uh, so that you can utilize both uh, inputs. We previously programmed group two to be the bottom four relays. The audible switching of the relay is very nice to show with the, the low voltage switching so that they can see something happen. They can also come over here and do direct overrides on the controller themselves. So currently it says output one is uh, you want to set to an off state. Press enter. Turns that off. And that goes true for all the other relays. So you say hit number two. It says output number two is uh, you want to go to the off state. You press enter. And, and vice versa for the uh, going back to the on state. That's a quick tutorial of the controller's functionality as along with, along with the low voltage switch and the relay operation.